I think he's going to be uh, pretty excited to have the opportunity to be uh, have his name selected and play in the NHL. I'm not exactly the best example of this because I just asked you about half a dozen questions about him. But did, do you ever get tired of asking or answering questions about a player who's not even on your team anymore? No, um, I mean he's he's an easy guy to talk about just because of the type of person he is, um, and forget about the hockey side, just the type of person he is. And so, um, you know, he's an easy guy to talk about because of all the all the good things that he does. Well, let's we can talk about a, a guy who's actually still on the Generals uh, right now. Um, we spoke to him a few weeks ago. We had the pleasure. Uh, it was uh, Calvin DeHaan. Um, what can you tell us about uh, Calvin DeHaan that most people don't already know? Um, you mean, I think the interesting thing with Calvin is the fact that he's becoming more and more known. Um, and the best thing about him is that he burst on the scene quite, uh, you know, quite quickly without anybody really understanding who Calvin DeHaan was at the beginning of the season. Um, and that's a credit to him. And it's a credit to his uh, development over the course of uh, not only this year, but the previous year when, you know, we drafted him two years ago um, in the third round. And uh, he played a year of uh, junior A hockey in Ottawa. And uh, as I said, that's he, his development has been um, incremental every year. Um, he's a very smooth skating, uh, smart, offensively talented defenseman. Uh, great first pass, uh, defensively very aware. Um, you know, I mean, I think he's uh, he's one of those defensemen for the new game. Um, something that seemed to be a bit of a soft spot with him, and and he, and he did mention this is um, uh, a, a common criticism of him is that he's not exactly ideal NHL size, or that he's quote unquote small. Do you do you did you ever see that as a problem in his game? No, I. I Without being too uh, rude, I just think that's bunk. You know, in in terms of it, I just think it's complete bunk. The kid, the kid. We had a team that, if you look at our our stats, we had two plus players all season, um, and Calvin was one of them. And logging the minutes that Calvin DeHaan logged for him to be um, a plus player on our team that missed the playoffs, um, I mean, it just tells you a little bit about where he's at and the type of defensive defenseman he can be. Um, his ability or inability to be physical in today's game, it's positioning, it's the ability to have, uh, you know, be agile and, and be in position properly. And uh, I read a stat halfway through the course of the year where they said Nicholas Lidstrom had thrown only 15 body checks through the course of a season through that through that point in time. You know, granted, Nicholas Lidstrom is a pretty solid physical specimen. However, I mean, the, some defensemen are, are physical and need to hit. Some guys aren't. And Calvin's one of those defensemen in today's game where they don't need to be overly physical. They can get in the way, you know, contain in, in certain areas. And uh, I just think Calvin's feet overcompensate for any, again, any deficiency. And I think that's the beauty of today's game because you can allow the agile um, defenseman to be able to be in those situations, I think. Um, that's why I say it's bunk. And, uh, I mean, I think Calvin's well-suited for, for today's uh, NHL. And there's a few other players on the Gens who are slated to go maybe a little later in the uh, in the draft. Um, Andy Andrioff, just off the top of my head, could, could you maybe talk about some of those guys um, for fans of teams they get drafted to? Yeah, we hope. I mean, certainly there's a number of other players that are rated by the Central Scouting, and whether they get drafted or not, it's obviously up to the individual teams. But uh, you mentioned Andy Andrioff was a local uh, player here in, in Osh. He was a Pickering boy. Um, you know, about 6'1", uh, 190, um, you know, just a solid player. Can, actually, for me, he's been great because he's been able to play all three positions uh, up front um, and been very reliable, and we're hoping that, you know, his growth continues where next year we're going to count on him a little bit more and put a little bit more uh, responsibility on his plate. Um, and then there's Scott Valentine, who's a player that we uh, we had uh, picked up in the John Tavares trade from the London Knights and uh, very physical. See, there's one of the defensemen that he loves to play physical, and that's his game. And uh, um, it's great, and he's a good first-pass guy. And, uh, you know, for a guy, the midseason rankings by NHL Central Scouting was not on the midseason rankings, but at the end of the year he was on the, on the rankings at 110. So it kind of gives you an understanding of his development uh, when he came to Oshawa. Michael Zador is a goalie who we picked up in the trade as well. Um, and uh, he was uh, the starting goalie for Team Canada at the World Under-18s just recently and uh, was a player of the game a number of times and uh, I think put himself in good stead with scouts there. And, uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. Um, you know, certainly uh, we hope that those guys are able to get drafted and, uh, you know, give them a little bit more, uh, you know, shot in the arm through the course of the summer. 
Thanks a lot. We've been with uh, Chris DiPiero, uh, head coach and GM of the Oshawa Generals. Thanks so much for uh, taking some time uh, to talk to us and uh, give us a little preview for the NHL draft. Thanks, Steve. This is your Steve Dangle exclusive.